All aboard, it's Jang here with a look at the Playmobil Royal Lion Knights Castle. This is the big one, the new big castle from the Knights series. It comes with officially 320 pieces and it includes four figures as well as a horse. Down at the front for the main entrance, they have this gold gilded set of heavy doors here. So lots of gold material used there, or gold colored material. No portcullis involved here, but they do have a, a block that goes across the back of this. And when you open this up, you can see it from back here. You can just turn this piece of wood along so you can bring it up like that. and It'll stay in place and then it'll lock across the door. So there's no way to open this up when you have that in there. Uh, there's no no little secret special little action feature to allow that to be to be undone however over to the side here if these doors are closed you can't get through it you can use a battering ram right here and this is the first way to to get in there and that actually works really well it gives just a small little bit of access for figures to get in around the side to the right there's another entrance way and this one is something you don't need to break into per se but i think if you hitch up something and use a horse or oxen or something to pull this out or, or a whole team of men and that's how this is supposed to be able to open up here and there's just a room inside of there and if you look in there with some light you see there's just a, a little shelving unit on the side but it doesn't really hold very much i think this is supposed to be the stable area and that's where you would you would keep your horse and you could put hay down in there but it's just a it's just an open space on the on the other side it just allows you to to get in there uh, you know, into the main courtyard area. Around the back, you're seeing kind of the cliff side that the castle is built onto. They actually have a small tree off to the side. And then this is a huge kind of cave system. And this is large. It's much larger than it appears. At first, I can just keep reaching in and reaching in. Wow, it goes way, way back. It's ridiculous. It's so deep how far you can put things in there. It's large enough to fit the the great dragon the green one the the relatively new one that i previously reviewed in there this is just a little extra rock feature i think you could store a little something in there or use it as a as a watering trough or something like that but anything that you can think of can be put in there because it's a huge space but there's another area that can open that's not even connected to that so i just put my hand back to the wall and then this is a completely separate section over here this is really the proper dungeon of this castle. And this is just a human access panel. This isn't really for the figures right here. You're not supposed to be able to get in and, and out of this per se, I don't think. Maybe if you have something that's super strong, you could break those rocks. But I think this is mostly just for folks like me and you to be able to get in there to access what's inside. For instance, you have this old prisoner uh, who has been in there a little bit too long. Yeah, he expired. He's just a skeleton now. You see, he was even he was even chained down to the, the base. This would be a spike that goes way down into the ground. So that's included there. He, he has a, a little pallet. I guess that would that would have been his uh, his bed, like his pillow or something. Really sad. He must have done something really bad. But again, plenty of, of space here. And this is interesting here also because there's a little shape. Gosh, it's hard to see in there. There's a little shape in, in the background there. You could kind of hook this up, slide that in like so. So you'd have just a little bit of access in to being able to, to see. I don't know if a figure could actually crawl through there, but just a little bit of kind of a, a sight access, or maybe you could pass things back and forth into to the area where the, the dragon would stay. But this doesn't really fit in from the other side. Well. Kinda, you can do that, but I think it makes more sense to do it this way so you can pass things back and forth with the dragon or with somebody who has made it into the dragon's lair. This last side that we haven't seen yet is relatively plain. I think it looks nice. I think this is one of the, the better angles from which to view the castle. You see it's different levels and it really has a nice depth as viewed from this side. But there, there are no real action features here. No, none of these panels are intended to come out, although you can clearly see that they're made of many different sections. So if you want to expand or combine things together, this is one of the places where you start to pull things apart. From higher up then, you can see the shape of the courtyard and you can see just how much of the inner space is taken up by some of that cliffside there. And there is another kind of dungeon-like space, but this is just small because that, 
that rock base is just huge. You have the area that we, where we saw the, the skeleton in there, which has plenty of room, that's behind here. There's the dragon space, which is back in that corner there. And then there's another space right here, which you can just kind of define as, you know, just imagine its floor space is just beneath this little section here. And this is a little trap door, so somebody can actually get trapped and you know fall down into there, and it has a little locking gate on the, the front of it. And this space right here also has uh, it's kind of a walkway. You can see how this is a walkway path. It's steps. So if a bad guy is coming up here, that's where you would trap them and you would pull the handle, although you would have to be pretty close to that. Maybe put a rope on it. That might work out a little bit better, but there is a secondary little uh, kind of trapping sort of section here or safety section with this drawbridge. It's a cantilevered drawbridge. And on the other side, there's a rope here that you can pull on or you can completely let that go it has a couple of little hand holds for your figures to hold on to so one can actually grab that and pull it up and you see how by default everything would be like this so this would be up and it's like hey just come on in you know it's all it's all good you know nobody's nobody's invading you can just walk back and forth it's perfectly fine but when invaders start to come the first thing that you do is you start to drop some of them down in there and if they're walking around then you definitely need to do like that to save more of the inner space. On this balcony over here, you can see the large cannon that has handholds. Oops, knocked a knight over. That has handholds for four people. So four people can work together to carry this around. And this has this huge shot and it's spring loaded. You pull back right here. This is basically the, the trigger mechanism. So you can make it go up and down. But then this is the, the trigger button right here. And you pull that back and it shoots this out. And you see, that's a pretty large thing and it's fairly round. So when it lands, it continues to roll. I like this in some ways better than the projectile ones that have, that are like missiles that have the, the tail that sticks out. Cause this is, this is something that feels more destructive. It feels like it would just keep on rolling, keep on going after it shoots out. So I like this design quite a bit, but sorry about that. Mr. Knight here, he's supposed to be a good guy, but there's another safety feature. So if somehow or another your, your enemies have managed to get back here and they are starting to come in towards the main structure of the castle, well, there is a small portcullis that's built into this wall, which has this really nice ornate detail up here with the sticker that gets inlaid there. So that looks really nice. And interestingly, the trigger for the portcullis to come down is all the way up here at the top. So watch that doorway, that entrance way. Imagine that the, the evil knights are coming in. You can just stop them by pushing this and letting it go. And that drops down and it's nice and, and sturdy right there. It's a it's a tall piece that goes all the way through here. And this comes actually pre-assembled, except for the sticker. This all comes as one ready-made assembly that just becomes part of this wall for the tall tower section. Now over to the left is kind of the, the royal balcony where the king and queen can come out to address the subjects from there. And that's the, the main door. And we'll also take a look at this from the back now. I'll just go around, but I do want you to see how the the roof is kind of a hybrid setup where it's actually got shingles on it. First though, we'll just finish up with the tower. This is the section with the portcullis you can see from the front. So this is just some access way back to a rear kind of balcony area. There's a second floor up here, which has a little stairway and a locked iron little doorway right there, which will actually take you on to the, what I just called the, the royal balcony. And there is a ladder, which you can see that's hanging there right now and the ladder will take you all the way up to the very top. And that's just the, the, the ultimate overlook of the whole place. And there's just a little hatchway that gives you access so your figures can come up and down, but there's no, there are no other features up here. You can retract the ladder. It's just the, the standard setup that they usually do. So another thing you can do for safety, you can also let it down, but uh, it doesn't go too far. And the ladder doesn't really work between the first floor down here and the second one. From that first floor, there's another locked door, and you can see that this has the, the crown up above on a sticker. So this is getting into the, the king and queen's chamber areas. You know, it's where, where they live. So that definitely needs to have high security there, and that's why there are so many traps along the way before you can get to this. 
The lower floor of that area is fairly open, but this is where the kingdom's treasure is hidden safely under this large stone slab here, which has a nice little embossing on it. Well, it's actually printed, you know, it's flat. It's physically flat except for a couple of cracks around the edges, but it's supposed to, to represent something that's carved in there. But that looks very nice, and that just has this pit beneath. And there is the treasure chest itself, and that has a lock on it. Another, another safety device has a lock on it. And inside you will just find a whole lot of gold coins of different denominations. They give you one bag of those, so that's safely kept secure under there. And one more trap feature. This over here is a little grate that can be opened up and you can throw somebody down in there and that will throw them down into the, the proper dungeon area where we saw the skeleton before. Finally, the second floor there has the nice wooden planking for the floor. That is actually supposed to be the, the king's throne. And then there's a spot over here, it's a, it's a table or a desk for, for writing on or writing at. And it has a quill in there and this is an interesting thing that when I first, I first started looking at it and I was reading it and I was trying to figure out what language it was, I'm like, it's like German, but it's, it's older. And indeed, it is an older form of German. And this is a slightly modified excerpt of the, the beginning of, of a, a famous set of, of tales, of old tales of a, a dragon slayer. And it's just a whole hero, heroism Thing, and this is just the beginning, so it's, it's kind of vague in what it actually says, but if you actually type that in and actually search it up, you will, you will find the full text and the history of it. Here are the four figures included with the set. The king, the queen, a knight, and a long bowsman, an archer with a long bow. The king has his special sword at his side with a different colored hilt to it. He's also got his scepter, royal scepter, in his hand there. That's two pieces you put together. The queen has very ornate robes on. She also has a little bit of a kind of a belt tie going around the front of her. The knight here, the, the major main knight, is uh, very, very golden. And he's got the little bit of a cape on the back. He's got the, the royal lion emblem up on top and you can also of course open up the front so you can see his face it's just a plain regular normal standard face that's cool it's got a sword there as well and the shield which can be uh, mounted different ways it's got the little rotating handle on the back the the archer has his quill at his side and he's got a really nice uh, little, uh, I don't know what the proper term is for this that that archers have it's a it's a very specific thing that gives them a little extra protection and, and support. Looking at these from the back and see how that piece goes around. You can see the, the cape for the knight, which is actually a removable piece, and just the rest of the details from the back. The set also includes one horse, which a knight can ride, and there's no real armor on this horse, so it's fairly, fairly straightforward and, and plain. And they also include a couple of small little rats that you can just distribute about the grounds however you like just to add a little extra life and flavor to the scene. The set also includes a large weapons rack with lots of weapons. As a matter of fact there's everything that you see here plus there's also an extra sword included in the set and there's also an extra shield included in the set. It's only one that's able to be held horizontally though so all that stuff is just extra and turn this around, maybe you can see a little bit better how some of these things are individual. So a couple of flails up above also, a couple of halberds, a couple more swords there. I don't know the term, the name for these silver long uh, pole weapons there. But there's also that shield on the front, which is currently helping to hold everything in place, but you can remove that and use it with a figure. I mentioned expanding things and adding things on to the castle. Well, this is just one example they show on the back of the instruction sheet showing the combination of the Hawk Knight's castle with this one. And it also includes uh, one other supplemental set that's included here that has one small uh, uh, extension, it gives you a, a wall extension. But this Royal Lion Knight's castle just by itself is extensive. There's a lot going on with it. It doesn't have a whole lot of small little things to, to put in different places. You know, if you really want to kind of 
furnish it out. That still needs to be done with separate add-on sets. I do appreciate the weapons rack and you know how many extra weapons are included with it. The figures are good and there's a decent number of them. Of course, you can always want to, to add more, but that's what the, the extra supplemental figure packs are for. Ultimately, I do feel like there are a lot of compromises that had to be made in the design of this set, but they worked out really, really well. The one thing that I don't particularly like about this set is actually how it looks from the front, down at the ground level. The front face of the castle is fairly plain to me. Let me know what you think about this castle on the whole and about its individual features. Please leave your feedback and a comment on the video. It's always appreciated. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope I showed you everything that you wanted to see about this set. I will be talking to you again very soon because more videos are on the way.